The moon and stars they wept The morning sun was dead The Savior of the world was fallen His body on the cross His blood poured out for us The weight of every curse upon Him One final breath he gave as heaven looked away. The Son of God was laid in darkness. A battle in the grave, the war on death was waged. The power of hell forever broken. The ground began to shake, the stone was rolled away, his perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King has rendered you defeated for rolled away his perfect love could not be overcome now death where is your sting our resurrected king has rendered you defeat We praise you, Lord. 
thank you, God. Good morning, everybody. We've already entered these uh, presents, uh, presents, presents with praise and thanksgiving, so that's a good thing. And uh, I don't know if you all been to the Easter story, but we, a lot of us have, and uh, it's good, and it's real good, and it, it really uh, gets us going in our hearts and, and gets us close to the Lord, and uh, I hope it does you too, and I hope you're very close to the Lord today, and you've got a great relationship with Jesus. And I hope you're ready to shout this morning, because I am, because that tomb is empty, it really is. It's been empty for a while. Woo! That's the reason our hearts are full. Amen? Hey, is anybody in here who loves Jesus? Amen. Woo! That's what I like right there. Amen. Praise the Lord. We want to welcome you here. We're going to praise the Lord. We're going to enter in and just keep going. Ain't we? Let's just keep praising Him because He is worthy and He's due all the praise. I want you to pray for every church up and down the valley. Everyone that's preaching the gospel, somebody be saved at one of them. Amen? And I hope they're saved here. I hope we have to go to the creek and stay there till we have to start the Easter story tonight. Yeah. Baptized. And that would be the greatest thing ever was in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Can I get a witness this morning? Yeah. I'm beside myself a little bit because He is risen and He is seated on the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. And that's the reason we do what we do because He's done what He did. And one day after a while we all going to be together on the other side. That's the best thing ever. I can't hardly stand it. Whoo! Praise the Lord. Let's listen to that. I know there's a lot of prayer requests, but for time's sake this morning, unless you audibly need to say something, I'd like for you to raise your hand and say, I've got a special prayer request in my heart, and I want everybody to pray for it all over the house, every one of them. Now, we're supposed to pray you one for another, and we're going to pray about every one of these. We'll pray for those that need healing, those that need to be saved, those that just are hurt and need a healing in their heart. We're going to pray for each one of them. Amen? Amen. Whew. Praise the Lord. Brother Jason, you want to come lead us to the Lord in prayer? Amen. I love my brother. And we love Jesus because he first loved us. <laughs> I can go on for a while. I'm going to do this on behalf of my wife. So what's on your heart today, babe? She says, choose yourself a door. You see, if you see all these doors behind me, he said this house to Saloma could be one that like leads out into the world. And then we got a couple doors that you can't even see that people think that they're sneaking in and out of, but God sees all. But there's a door that was prepared over 2,000 years ago called right there the empty tomb. And without him risen, we have no hope. So choose this day the door. I'm going to tell you who the door is. It says this in John chapter 10. He says, I am the door. Amen. I asked a woman last night, I said, what did it do for you? I said, what was it? And she might even be here today. I don't know. She was sitting right up there where the Lesters are, where the Johnsons are. And uh, she said, it was when Jesus said, Mary. Let me tell you something. You know when Jesus calls your name. And there comes a time, just like you might think you're not recognizing Jesus, because Mary thought that he was a gardener. But there's going to come a time when it's just you and Jesus. And he's going to clearly call your name. And you're going to either do one thing or the other. You're going to recognize him as Master, my Lord, and my Savior. Or you just think he's just another person. How many of y'all here know he's not just another person? Let's all bow our heads. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you, God. Lord, thank you, Lord, for you are still a name-calling Savior, God. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will call out through whatever manner, God, of those that are in need of you today. Lord, I pray, Lord, uh, that the lukewarm become hot today, God. Lord, I pray that the unsaved become saved, God. I'm so thankful, God, that those that need a touch, uh, Lord, of healing, spiritually, physically, mentally, whatever it is, God, it is your hand that can do all those things. 
Lord, this morning we celebrate more than just an empty tomb. We celebrate you, Jesus, because you're the one that came and suffered on the cross to us, God. You're the one, Jesus, uh, that went all the way. You were the one, God, that was lifted up, Lord, for my sins and all of us, God. Lord, thank you for giving us a chance to be saved. I pray that somebody today will do that in like manner, God. We just want you to come into this place uh, and come in here and just embellish us all with your love, God, uh, with your grace. And Lord, let your spirit go from heart to heart, breast to breast. And God, let us just know that we are in the house of the risen Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray these things and amen. Are we going to sing a song of fellowship? Or no? Yes? No. Yes or no? Hey, that's this Jesus thing. Is it yes? Or is it no? Bunch of music ministers up here looking. Do we got a song? What is it? Oh my gosh, yeah. It's, it's hard to shake hands when you're going like this. Well, that's good. Everybody stand up and shake hands. Whoa, I, oh, I hey, whoa, I, I, yeah. whoa, I see an empty grave. <laughs> those tears child there's no need to cry stand up on your feet now lift your head up high no way to tomorrow to lay down your sorrow freedom is here today wipe away those tears child and put down your shame oh I I hear the heavens waking, angels in jubilation, back storms be rolled away. I bet the devil's shaking, somebody celebrate, I see it Put down your shame. Oh, I, I see an empty grave. I hear the heavens waking, angels in jubilation. Bad storms be rolled away. I feel the darkness breaking. I bet the devil's shaking. Somebody celebrate. Those tears, child, go and tell the news. Oh, tell that the news. The darkness was finished in the tomb. It finished in the tomb. It's all reversed, the apple, the curse. Three oh. days in the ground. Christ our Lord is risen. Death couldn't hold him down. I just want to uh, welcome everybody. You know, uh, 
It's Easter Sunday. Hey, our Lord is risen today. I don't know about you all, but that gets me so excited to know that we don't serve a dead Savior. We don't serve a, a, a dead God. You know, you, you can go to the tomb of Muhammad. You can go to the tomb of Buddha. But you cannot go to the tomb of my Jesus and him be in there. You know, I, I was... Uh, I was listening to a preacher this morning, and he said there were arguments in Israel, in in Jerusalem, about which tomb Jesus was in. There's two. There's two tombs that they can't decide which one Jesus was in. And so I wanted to just tell you that today, it doesn't matter which tomb it is, because here's the thing. Jesus can resurrect two people today. He can resurrect himself, and he can resurrect you. I don't know about you, but that's all I needed to hear. Because when I know that Jesus is alive and alive forevermore, it means that I can be alive and alive forevermore. And if it's for me, it's for you. Because God is a God of whosoever's. And I am a whosoever, and so are you today. With that being said, we're going to come and worship together for a, for a few minutes And then following that, we're going to have some preaching. But most of all, we're going together say, Jesus, we believe that you are risen today. Today. All right. Who's ready to worship? All right. That's about seven of you. Who's ready to worship? Let's worship together in spirit. You know, a lot of people had a lot of ideas about who Jesus was back in biblical times. Uh, this song is called, this called Sunday is Coming. And it says, some say madman, some say king. And I know exactly who I call him. My Savior who died on that cross right here. He said, king of the Jews. He's my king. And I hope you can call him yours this morning. A great light dawns in Galilee Some say madman, some say king A wonder-working rebel priest Jesus Christ the Nazarene He knew well what it would take Free us all from sin and grave A perfect man would have to die And only he could pay that price Friday's good cause Sunday is coming Don't lose hope cause Sunday is coming Whatever you're done, you better start running. Friday's good cause Sunday is coming. So we let the soldiers take him in. As his friend betrayed him with a kiss. There before the mocking crowd Like a lamb to the slaughter didn't make a sound Then he carried that cross to Calvary And he shed his blood to set us free As the nails went in and the sky went dark the redemption of the world was on his heart. Friday's good cause Sunday's coming. Don't lose hope cause Sunday's coming. Devil, you're done, you better start running. Friday's good cause Sunday's 
Then he breathed his last and bowed his head, the Son of God, and man was dead. With bloody hands, tears on their face, they laid him down inside that grave. But it wasn't the end. That wasn't the end, that wasn't the end. Let me tell you what happened next. The women came before the dawn to find that stone already gone. When they looked inside, the angel said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He's alive, he's alive, hallelujah, he's alive. Give him praise, lift him high, hallelujah, he's alive. Say a prayer for me. Deanna <laughs> insisted I sing this, and it's been years, but I love the words to it. It's a wonderful song, and I love my Jesus, and I thank him for all he's done for me. Praise you, Lord. They were watching from a distance, but they could not take their eyes from you. You were bleeding, they were weeping, faithful sisters, they had followed you. They did not understand, they could not see, they were mourning their loss. As the sky turned black and the earth turned red at the foot of the cross. They were standing near your mother. They were so close they could hear you sighing all around them. Angry voices pierced the darkness and you were dying but they would not leave they lingered there no matter the cost they were staying they were praying at the foot of the cross keep me near the cross near the cross May I never stray so far that I cannot see what flowed down for me at the foot of the cross. Now 
I'm standing in your presence and I cannot take my eyes from you you have risen and I'm forgiven precious Savior oh how I worship you I'm not looking back I've heard your voice I'm staying here Lord I made my choice and now it's real now I kneel at the foot of the cross keep me near the cross oh near the cross may I never stray so far that I cannot see what flowed down for me at the foot of the cross Jesus keep me near the cross Oh, near the cross, may I never stray so far that I cannot see what flowed down for me at the foot of the cross. Um, this is a song that we've, I've sung, I guess, 30 years, so feel free to help me. You should know it. Um, I try my best to get out of it, but um, it's all about Jesus. So just stand if you want to and sing or sit in your seats. It don't make no difference. But you know, he's alive. It's resurrection morn. And, you know, he died on that cross for you and for me. And I thank God for those, those beautiful, blessed songs. So help me sing, please. They placed him in a borrowed tomb at the ending of that day they watched as Joseph roll the stone then they sadly walked away but suddenly within their broken hearts echoed the words they heard him say don't weep for me, I'll live again on resurrection morn. Resurrection morn, he rose to set the captive free. Resurrection Victory at breaking all the dawn. They went running to the tomb, for he was gone. Mary cried and said, My Savior lives on resurrection morn. Yes, he does. He walked along beside of them Still they did not believe He sat with them and broke the bread Then their eyes were made to see As they watched him take him from their sight Behold, two men robed in white said, Like he ascends, he'll come again on resurrection morn. Resurrection morn, he rose to set the captive free. 
resurrection morn. Jesus, glory have breaking all the dawn. They went running to the tomb for he was gone. Mary cried and said, my Savior lives on resurrection morn. Mary cried and said, My Savior lives on resurrection morn. Resurrection morn. Y'all pray for me. I'm a lot more nervous than I normally am. I don't know what's going on. But uh, I do and I don't, you know what I'm saying. But uh, let me get everything put just like I need it. Or just like the Lord needs it. Hey, let's, live, let's give the Lord a big old hand. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to do the traditional Easter message and I'll go into whatever God gives me. Amen. And uh, he put a lot of stuff on my heart. Uh, me and Michelle have been talking the last day or two and we found a lot of stuff that we didn't know we, we had, that we had done, that we didn't even remember doing. And God brought it all back into our remembrance. So I'm going to share that with you as well. And uh, let's start in Luke uh, chapter 24. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre. And they said, well, I've heard this for the last week or two. You're going to hear it again. Bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone. That was on the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> and it came to pass as they were much perplexed there about, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Brother Pat, what did they say? <laughs> they went away. <laughs> Why seek ye the living among the dead? Next one. He is not here, but he's risen. Remember how he spoke unto you when he was at yet in Galilee? Give me another one. Sid. Saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. Now we all know in the scriptures how it tells about Judas and this morning Brother Ryan preached so good at the sunrise service. About We always remember how Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus was sold by Judas for 30 pieces of silver and he went back because he felt bad about it and it was a bothering him so he went back to give the money back and he couldn't because it was blood money and they would not put it back into the treasury. So they took that money and they bought a field called the potter's field and it was for old broken vessels and things and people that didn't have much worth and more or less like a garbage dump. A lot like my life for the Lord come me, turned me around and got me on the right track. Amen? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, everything is purposed in God. Judas was there because he needed to be. Everything. Do you know that Jesus washed Judas' feet? He did because he loved him just the same as he did the others. Uh, he knows who's going to betray him. He knows who's not going to live right. He knows, who, but he also knows who is going to, amen? And he knows if you love him or not. That's what makes this thing so beautiful. You know, God knows your heart better than your wife or your spouse or me or anybody else in this place. God knows your heart. You know why he knows it? Because he made it, praise God. It's more than we was talking about. Everybody's talking about how they're taking God out of school. Well, that is a lie. 
God ain't taking out of school. They're trying to. There's Christians all over the school system. Amen? And they're praying every day. And there's Christian children going into them schools too. Uh, you can tell. I, they say it ain't in the, that he's not in America anymore, but he is, praise God. He is. He's right here with us right now. Hey, they can't whoop him. They can't overcome him. They can't run him off. Hey, you could take God out of it, but if you did, you would have nothing. I'm telling you, when, without God in your life, you got nothing. And if you try to take God out of the center of anything in this world, you got nothing. Because all things were made by him and for him. Without him, nothing was made that was made. You can't have nothing worth having without having God. That's the best thing I've ever seen, ever felt, and ever heard of. Amen? I don't know about you, but I know there's a God from the time I was big enough to walk and have an understanding. Some people said, how's that? I did. I've told it many times. I'd lay in the backyard under the clothesline where mom had hung up clothes. I'd watch them big white fluffy clouds go by. And I'd make out animals and this and that. But I tell you what, I know there's a God just as sure as I was laying there in that grass looking up at that sky. And there is a God. And he is good. And he's looking for you. Amen? Yes, Whoo! Where should we go? Praise the Lord. Where can I go but to the Lord? <laughs> Let me tell you something. I want to go here for just a moment. We got right here in Ephesians. Is that in 4 and 30? Yeah. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. I'm telling you about those that have God. When you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, he said, I'll come in and take up my abode in you. Now, he'll never go out. If, you, if you'll just hold on, he'll take care of you. Are oh, you preaching, preacher, that it's eternal security? I'll tell you this. I'm preaching an eternal, secure God. Amen? And he is eternally secure. But let me tell you, if you will line up in God's Word, the best thing you ever had. I'm a firm believer. Either you got it or you don't. Some will want to argue about that later, and that's all right. I'll argue all day long on that if you want to. Anyway, I can tell you this, that God loves you. And I'll tell you this, there's so many people nowadays, they have half wind. They've half been saved, uh, they say. But that God don't do nothing halfway. If he started a good work in you, he'll finish it. Amen? And if you'll seek him with your whole heart, he shall be found. Whew. I feel like preaching. Okay, what scripture are we on here? Okay, John uh, 17 and 16. It says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Hey, when you get saved, you come out of the world. Listen to me. When you come out of the world, and but that world that we're coming out of, we come and we get equipped and then we go back into the world. We preach the gospel and we shine that light of Jesus to everybody we meet. Yes. Amen? Give me another scripture. It's all about God's word. Glory. Let me tell you something. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I also sent them into the world. And for their saints I sanctify them. That's the reason when he sanctified them and got them ready and he equipped them and they got that Holy Spirit down inside of them when he come in the upper room. How many in here has the Holy Ghost? Oh, I've got a few. Ah, uh, if you've been saved, you've got the Holy Ghost. Amen. You don't know exactly when you got it and where you got it at. You don't know exactly when it happened too, praise the Lord. I know right where it was on May the 1st, 1994. Woo! I got the Holy Ghost before I got in the water. I got saved on Mother's Day, praise the Lord. When I got saved, I was saved from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. And when he saved me, I wanted to be baptized. But I wanted to tell somebody so they could come, amen? Woo! Boy, it's better felt than told. Salvation is the best thing ever, and it ain't coming no other way besides Jesus Christ. I hope that you're saved this morning. I hope that you're happy in your soul, and I hope that you would know that what God done, he done for you, and that if you'd accept that, you'd be the happiest thing that ever lived. Whoo! Come on, can I get a witness? God is the best thing ever happened in this world. Nobody's relieving. They don't, I don't, I don't, hey, you know what I'm saying. I ain't talking tongues. I'm just tongue-tied. Amen? Come on. If it gets bad enough, somebody give me an interpreter, okay? All right. Now listen to me. Here's what we're going to go into. Me and Michelle was at the house uh, talking, and I, I'll go into it like this. We found a little book. Does anybody remember these? 
little New Testaments they gave out years and years ago. Anybody got any at the house? People raising their hands up everywhere. Let me tell you, some things you forget about, but he'll bring back into recollection those things that you've forgotten if you just let it go long enough. I told you that I always believed in God. I always knew they was. But I didn't know what to do with it. We didn't go to church. We wasn't raised in church. We was taught to be good people. That don't get it. There was a little woman would come around to the school systems. Was it Worley? Margaret. Was that her name, Margaret? Yep. And what was the one that you... Corinne. These women would go around to the school systems. And they would tell the stories of Jesus on a felt board in the school systems. And as they told them stories, they'd get a guitar out and sing. And I learned to sing about uh, Daniel and the Lions, then this and that. We'd have all kinds of Jesus loves me. And we'd learn all these songs, but I didn't go to church. The only church I had was third and fourth grade. <laughs> But anyway, if you can bring the pictures up, I want to tell you what's in the front of this book. It's a little bitty book with a big old message. Amen? Right here is the first page of it. Number one says you need to be saved. Can we get a witness about that? Amen? It says, There is none just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Ecclesiastes 7.20. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. This is right in this little bitty book that we hit. Oh, uh, hey, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. Hey, therefore, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3 and 3. Give me another picture. This is in the front of this little bitty book. This little bitty book's got a great big message. Amen? And then here we go again. And it goes uh, for the thoughts. Uh, down a little bit it says, uh, you can't save yourself. So it tells you this, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends of the ways thereof is death. Proverbs 16. It goes on and on. Uh, down three it says, God has already provided your salvation. He already had it ready for me before I even knew it. And I knew there was a God, and he had prepared something for me that I needed, but I didn't even know how to ask for it. But this thing teaches you, brothers. Listen to me. Go on to the next one here. It said, okay, up here, look at it. For I delivered unto you first all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. As I read these things, I didn't know exactly what they was for, but I know some man had done something great for me. I didn't know exactly why he did what he did, but it comes to you a little bit here and there, here a little, there a little. Precept upon precept, line upon line. Four says, believe the record which God has given and have everlasting life. Are you listening to me this morning? All right. Right here, five says, you must confess Jesus as Lord before men. Whosoever therefore shall confess me, listen, confess me the mouth of the Lord Jesus. Okay, well, we're going. But it says, it is appointed unto me. Okay, and then it is ever they said. <laughs> it's confessed me before my Father which is in heaven. It says we can't be ashamed. Are you ashamed of Jesus this morning? How many in here has been saved by the amazing grace of God? <laughs> How many in here is ashamed this morning? Huh. I strongly suggest that you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. That's the reason we do what we done, because of what he done. Amen. Amen. That's what we do here. We try to portray the story, but man, we can't do it justice, but we try as hard as we can. But it says that for that your faith which saves produces good works. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith? and have not works, can the faith which he says he has save him? Even so faith, as it is no works, is dead, being alone. Show me thy faith without thy works. I will show thee my faith by my works. James 2 and 14 and 18 through 18. Now, reading that, I wanted to go to this. There's a woman in here that signed this New Testament because in it, it has a part, and it asks you, if you had accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And if so, you should sign your book. There was a woman here that signed it at about seven years old. Her name's Michelle. Could you stand up, honey? And she signed it. But you know what's so crazy about this? We had them in the same house and they never realized it. But there was a boy that signed it at seven year old too. <laughs> and I lived in Wells, Kentucky, same place I am now, before the 911 and all that. But he said this, but I was seven year old at the same time. So both of us at seven year old had signed their little Bibles after we had read what it takes to be saved. Wow, oh, you could get a big old message out of a little bitty book. Praise God. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Yeah, the first one, first preacher I ever heard was a woman. Hey, we're pretty well Baptists, I know, and I've said this before. But that woman showed me on that felt board <laughs> about Daniel and all them. And I can tell you this, uh, she spread the gospel just as good as anybody else did. But I give them glory because we're supposed to give honor to whom honor's due. Woo! Glory. Are you saying that? The woman should preach. Well, they can preach all day long as long as they don't say they're preaching. Amen. That's in the free wheels, the old records. I'll give you a whole bunch of them, okay? But a woman can tell people about the gospels, the gospels, and they can share the gospel. And he says, are you not all ministers? And I'm asking you today, are you saved? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Do you believe this morning? I'm telling you, that tomb is empty because of you. He got up because of you. He got up for you. And he's seated on the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. Woo, this is good stuff. I don't know about you, but I sure do love Jesus. And it says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He loved us so much that when we weren't living right or doing right, he still loved us. He still went to that cross for us knowing that we would deny him, that we would live wrong, and that we'd do crazy things. Ah, that is a reckless love right there. That is the craziest thing I could ever think of. How could a man love me so much that he would die for me, knowing that I would treat him bad? And even though I believed, I didn't know what to do with it, but he was working on me. He said, if I start a good work in you, I'll finish it. And boy, he will, if you'll let him. And he says, I'm the author and the finisher of your faith. Oh, boy. How many in here is he finishing right now? How many in here has he perfecting? How many in here is he sanctifying his brother was preaching on? God is so good, I can't hardly stand it. What about you? Woo! Praise the Lord. I know if Brother Ryan was preaching this morning about we always get on Judas, and I got on him again. But he said, what about Peter? Peter denied him three times. And he told him he loved him. And he'd say, oh, Lord, I would never do that. How many times have you done that? How many times have we denied the Lord? How many times have we denied him by the way we live? By the way we treat people? By the way we do things? How many times? But I'm going to ask you this morning, can't you do just a little bit better? Can't we all do just a little bit better? I'm going to challenge you today to do better. I'm going to ask you when you go home with your families to love them. I'm going to ask you to look over at your, at your father-in-law and tell him you love him. Look over at your sister-in-law and tell her you love her. Look over at the one beside of you and say, Jesus loves you. You might not know him, amen? You know what? There's something about love and there's something about Jesus in your heart. And I'm going to tell you this. We have a hope and glory because of Jesus that is within us. If you let Jesus in, you'll have a hope and a confident, a confident expectation, a hope of glory comes from knowing Jesus Christ. I know this is crazy, but I'm done. I'm finished. So let's go from there to the... Yeah, Brother Johnny, can you come up and read some for us? How's everybody up there in top doing? I ain't forgot about you. You know, the Lord, so many times we read in Romans, we read different things, but today I'm going to have each one of my brothers come and we're going to read scriptures as we give an invitation that was already given. 
When he come out of that tomb, he gave the best invitation ever was. If you'll come to him and you'll believe and, and mean what you say, he'll say, I know wise will cast you out. Will you or do you love the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart? Have you, are you serving him with everything in you? And if not, today would be a good time to make it right. Today would be a good time to sell plumb out to Jesus and give him everything. Not part of it, but all of it. Amen? I throwed them a curveball. Sorry. But uh, they should have the scriptures up there, I believe. We'll see. Romans 10, 8, 9, 10. We'll start with that. Romans 10, 8. But now what say it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth yep. the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. We're going to give you all of it. Go ahead as you read. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Amen. For there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For so whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <laughs> and how then shall they call on him? They that have not believed, how shall they believe in him? Will everybody stand if you're able?